May the love and peace of the Lord be with us all, as we listen to today's Gospel and Reflection. Let us now listen to the Word of God. July 19, 2024 Friday of the 15th week in Ordinary Time A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew At that time, Jesus went out through the ripe grain on the Sabbath. And his disciples, being hungry, began to separate the grain and to eat. Then the Pharisees, seeing this, said to him, Behold, your disciples are doing what is not lawful to do on the Sabbaths. But he said to them, Have you not read what David did, when he was hungry, and those who were with him, how he entered the house of God and ate the bread of the presence, which was not lawful for him to eat, nor for those who were with him, but only for the priests? Or have you not read in the law, that on the Sabbaths the priests in the temple violate the Sabbath, and they are without guilt? But I say to you, that something greater than the temple is here. And if you knew what this means, I desire mercy, and not sacrifice, you would never have condemned the innocent. For the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. The Gospel of the Lord Reflection How can we avoid falling into the trap of judging others too quickly, as the Pharisees did with Jesus' disciples? Jesus was going through a field of grain on the Sabbath. His disciples were hungry and began to pick the heads of grain and eat them. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to him, See, your disciples are doing what is unlawful to do on the Sabbath. Matthew 12 verses 1 to 2 When Moses gave the Ten Commandments to the people, there was a prohibition against working on the Sabbath. The Third Commandment said, in part, that you shall not do any work on the Sabbath. Exodus 20 verse 10 By the time of Jesus, the Pharisees had added much commentary to this law, and expanded it to include as many as 39 different forms of work that they believed was forbidden. Included in their list were the practices of harvesting and milling of grain. For that reason, when the Pharisees saw that the disciples were picking heads of grain and rubbing the grain off the husks so that they could eat it, the Pharisees condemned them for violating what they interpreted to be an offense against the third commandment. The first thing we can note from this passage is that the disciples were hungry. They were exceptionally devoted to Jesus and had been traveling with him from town to town so that he could preach the gospel. They had given up occupation, home, family, and income so as to be singly devoted to Jesus and his mission. And as a result of this, they were living in poverty and relying upon the generosity of others. It is in this context that they chose to eat the most humble of foods, grain that they picked as they walked. They didn't complain that there wasn't a hot meal waiting for them at their destination. They were accepting of the many long journeys by foot that they made. They were okay with the fact that they did not get to sleep in their own bed every night. But they did have the basic human need for food, so they picked this grain as they walked to fulfill this basic need of hunger. Though there are many lessons we can learn from this passage, one clear lesson is that of the temptation to judge and condemn others. When we fall into the trap of judging others, there are a few things that are common. First, judging and condemning often is based on perceived wrongs that are inflated and exaggerated. The Pharisees clearly inflated and exaggerated this sin of the disciples. In our lives, judgmentalness almost always makes the perceived sin of another far more serious than it is if it is sin at all. Another common temptation that flows from a judgmental and condemning heart is the failure to even understand the condemned party. In this case above, 
the Pharisees did not even inquire into the reason the disciples were picking and eating grain. They didn't ask if they had been without food for some time or how long they had been traveling. It didn't matter to them that they were hungry, and most likely, very hungry. So also with us, it is common that when we judge and condemn another, we arrive at our verdict without even seeking to understand the situation. Lastly, it needs to be said that judging others is not our right. Doing so is usually reckless and caused by our own self-centeredness. God did not give the Pharisees the authority to expand the third commandment into 39 forbidden practices, nor did he give them the authority to apply those interpretations to the perceived actions of the disciples. And God does not give us the authority to judge others either. If another is clearly caught in a cycle of objectively grave sin, we must do all we can to help draw them out of that sin. But even in that case, we have no right to judge or condemn. Reflect today upon any tendency you have toward being judgmental and condemning of others. If you see this tendency within yourself, spend time thinking about the Pharisees. Their self-righteousness was ugly and damaging. The negative example they set should inspire us to turn away from such acts of condemnation and to reject those temptations the moment they come. Let us pray. My divine judge of all, you and you alone know the heart, and you and you alone are capable of acting as judge. Please exercise your authority in my life so that I can perceive my own sin. As you do, please also free me from the tendency to judge and condemn. Fill me, instead, with a heart full of mercy and truth toward all. Jesus, I trust in you. Amen. Thank you for listening to today's Gospel and Reflection. We hope that our small effort gave you a bit of inspiration as you journey your day with God. Please give us a like so this will reach to as many people as possible. Again, thank you and may God bless us all.